so the highest prison sentence is 20 years, right? 20 years sentence. Okay? And then the question is, well, what is that variable? Well, that variable is S. So the worst thing to do in this game, and this game is S, right? The worst thing is S. And actually, I'll change the color of this. <clears throat> the worst thing to be in this game is a sucker. Nobody wants to be a sucker, right? So the worst thing that you can be in this game is a sucker, right? Alright. Well, well, what's the next worst thing that you can be in this game? <clears throat> the sucker's the worst thing. The next worst thing that you can do, well, 10 years would be the next worst, right? And we recognize that 10 has been associated with being punished, right? So being a sucker is the worst. Being um, punished is a little bit better than being a sucker, right? So we, and you guys know this symbol from like primary school, you know, elementary school or whatever, greater than or less than. Um, this punishment is worse, right? It's, it's a lot worse to be a sucker than it is to be punished. I'd rather be this than to be this, right? So if you think about this, there's a relationship between benefits, right? Which one is more beneficial? As we progress from left to right, we increase benefit. Right? We increase, we have greater benefit. It is more beneficial to be punished than it is to be a sucker. As we move from right to left, we decrease benefit. This is going to be uh, important as we segue the discussion from the prisoner's dilemma into the problem of free riders, right? Because we're going to be talking about collective, um, collective action and sort of a benefit analysis, right? An effort and benefit analysis in a second. All right. So then we recognize that um, being a sucker is the worst thing. The next worst thing is to be punished. Then we look for the next sentence. Well, the next sentence is R, right? You only get a year. Right? So cooperation is basically the second best thing. Right? Cooperation, where both parties cooperate, that's the second best thing. But the actual best thing in the game, right? the most achievable thing, the thing that people desire the most, is this. Why? Because I don't get any prison time at all, right? Uh, and what is this? Falling to temptation. Right? So that Temptation is the most, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Temptation is the most desirable. Right? Falling into temptation is the most desirable, and being a sucker is the least desirable. Okay, so now we've, we've fully realized uh, the prisoner's dilemma. We know the two parties. We know all of the um, conceivable associations that they have. Both defect, both cooperate, one defects and one cooperates. We've labeled all of their participation with variables, being a sucker, um, getting a reward, being punished or having a temptation. And now what we've done if we've, is we've realized how to flesh this out. The reason why I say that the numbers, the numerical values aren't of any importance to this, right, is because as long as this number is um, substantially lower than this number, then I can put in anything, right? I can put any variable. Just make sure that the numbers uh, decrease. So I can say that this will, um, this will be 10, this will be uh, 5, this will be 2, this will be 0. It doesn't really matter, right? What we recognize now is that being a sucker is the worst thing. Being punished is the next worst thing. Being um, rewarded is the second best thing, and falling into temptation is the best and most desirable thing. Once we've realized this, then we're able to recognize <clears throat> what people are most likely to do, right? The first option that an individual is going to pick is, I'm going to rat this other person out and hope that they don't rat me out, right? That's what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to rat this person out and hope that they don't rat me out. But the fact that I'm going to rat a person out makes so this is the most desirable, right? <clears throat> but then the question is, what's most likely to happen, right? That's most desirable, but what's most likely? Well, this is most likely, right? If I'm going to rat somebody out, then it's probably the case that they're going to rat me out as well. So what's most likely to happen in the prisoner's dilemma is we're both going to rat each other out, and we're both going to end up doing 10 years. Half the number of one person snitching the other person out, right? So despite the fact that I'm hoping that this other person won't rat me out, 
won't be a snitch while I'm snitching, that's probably not going to happen. It's most desirable, but it's least likely to happen. What's most likely to happen is that we're both going to rat each other out and we're both going to end up doing 10 years. Actually, what's most beneficial for us both to do, right, what's most beneficial for us to do is for both of us to remain silent, right? Um, that way, I serve a year, the other person serves a year, and we both remain silent, and that's why it's labeled R with a reward. <clears throat> this action um, of, of mutual cooperation is the foundation of the problem of free riders. And now we can sort of transition the discussion into the problem of free riding and free riders because it pertains to collective action. Anytime we're trying to make an assessment of collective or communal action, collective behavior, collective mentality, if you will, <clears throat> what we have to recognize is that the vast majority of participants in this game, now it wouldn't just be a game of two people, it would be a game and the game would be so large we just label the number with the letter N, right? Um, you can imagine a game of the United States population, right? Two, what is it, 350 million or whatever the number is, right? 350 million people um, factoring into this game of cost-benefit. Um, and what's typically going to happen is that people are going to um, ride on the coattails of people who are actually cooperating. There will be a vast majority of people who um, defect and do nothing. There will be a small majority, a small minority of people who actually participate but everybody reaps the benefits, right? And this is where the problem of free riding um, transitions into the prisoners with dilemma. It didn't make sense for me to go into the problem of uh, free riding directly without first uh, sort of assessing the prisoners with dilemma. And now that um, I've discussed it, now we can progress the conversation a step further, right? So it's going to get a bit more, a bit more complicated. Right. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is look at. Now what we're going to do is look at individual, an individual person, right? We're not going to jump right into an analysis of, of um, a huge collective. <clears throat> it's too complicated um, to discuss on YouTube, right? Um, but what we are going to do is look at an analysis of one individual's um, sort of relationship to this, this uh, idea of the amount of work that I put in and the benefits that, that's received from that work. The first thing to note is that anytime we're talking about benefit, benefit's always good. Even if it's a, a very low level of benefit, right? A very high level of benefit versus a very low level of benefit, it's basically win-win, right? As long as there's a benefit, I've won. The benefit might be low, I've still won. The benefit might be really, really high, I've still won. So anytime we're talking about benefit, the first thing to understand in the, um, the problem of free riding is that Benefits are always good. You can never have a bad benefit, right? So anytime there is a benefit, benefit is good. The way that I um, the, construct this 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 uh, this next segment on the problem of free writing is to first look at the individual action, and like we did in the prisoner's dilemma, try to formalize all the different ways in which an individual can act, 